morning, everybody. Let's give another minute to let a couple more people join. Okay, good stuff. I'll get started. So uh, good to see so many people returning today, and um, good uh, a good turnout on a Friday, I think. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and, and ready for uh, Christmas, hopefully. Um, so I suppose today what we're going to run through is model coordination. So so this is part of the design and construction technology series that we're running. We run it on the first Friday of every month, uh, running until you know indefinitely anyway. Uh, they're scheduled for the for the next twelve months anyway. So uh, great, great to see you back. And um, so today, what we're going to cover is model coordination, which exists within the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may have access to it. Um, and I'll explain if you know how you check if you have access to it and stuff like that as well. So model coordination sits within the ACC Autodesk.com or .eu environment, um, and it, it it found as one of the modules. If you have access to it, it will appear as model coordination. Um, it, it's design collaboration and model coordination actually come together. So if you have one, you have the other, basically. Uh, and I'll explain that in a couple of slides that I'm going to go through. Model coordination allows us to do flash detection within inside our ACC environment. It does also link into Revit. Uh, it also links into Navisworks. Um, and I'm going to talk through some of those workflows today. So between today's session, which is part one, and then we're going to have a part two session, which which will be in January um, uh, in, in the new year. So uh, we'll get through as much as we can get through today. I'll obviously take questions at the end and um, take questions at the end. And, and you know, hopefully I can, can answer for you today or, or get back to you in some other uh, type of manner as well. Um, so uh, I'm going to be using this previous project that you may be familiar with. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into a couple of uh, slides that I have ready. Uh, just to explain the workflow of model coordination. So model coordination can be used, I suppose, independent of Navisworks or Revit or, uh, 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 or design collaboration. So you can just use it independently, just to clash models that sit in a folder. But there are also other, I suppose, defined workflows that you can incorporate it into Navisworks. It just depends if you want to go all in, half in, or maybe just uh, part of the way in uh, uh, of using model coordination. So one of the workflows that I want to go through today is I want to talk about the Navisworks workflow. And I will introduce model coordination first, uh, just I'll talk about the principles of it and how that works. But just if you need to check uh, if you have access to model coordination, so effectively, if you know if you have access to it, uh, it, it comes as part of the BIM Collaborate Pro or BIM Collaborate subscription. And that's either of these up top, BIM Collaborate Pro and BIM Collaborate. The difference between BIM Collaborate Pro, by the way, it includes all the same modules, except it doesn't include the Revit Cloud work sharing. And, and you may have figured this from previous um, from previous webinars that we've done on, on design collaboration. So if you have Autodesk BIM Collaborate, you have access to model coordination uh, and actually design collaboration and docs and the same. If you access the BIM Collaborate Pro, you have all the same access. But you probably have Revit Cloud work sharing. But I'm not going to get into Revit Cloud work sharing. I'm solely going to focus on the ACC model coordination uh, because we 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 in other webinars we've looked at design collaboration and, and all those type of workflows as well. Um, but that's primarily what we're going to focus on today. Okay, so we've got a couple of slides I'm going to get through, um, and I just want to talk through the platform, and then we'll get into the 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 uh, into the software or into the platform itself uh, in a live demonstration. Uh, and by all means, look, put your questions into the chat box um, during the webinar. I'll answer them if I can. If not, so I'll, I'll wait till the end um, as long as there's enough time. So uh, that's how this is going to go. Um, so, yeah, that's model coordination part one. So, 
So I suppose one of the workflows that you can use is you can run clash detection with Navisworks and model coordination. And that's typically how model coordination is best used. You don't have to use the Navisworks integration, but I think to get the maximum benefit from it, uh, it is typically how you would use it. So I suppose just looking at the, the, the technical or capability workflow overall, um, you're going to use published models from Revit. Uh, you're going to run automated clash checks in the model coordination module. And then you're going to use the issues tool in BIM Collaborate to create, manage, and track those various issues uh, for or in docs. And, and you know, whether it's for quality or construction-based type coordination review. You're then going to append cloud-hosted models directly into Navisworks. And then you can also create, manage, and track issues for quality coordination and review from Navisworks as well. You can then run clearance and tolerance and other clash-based tests inside Navisworks that's separate to model coordination. All you're doing is pulling in the models and you can do what you typically do in Navisworks. So what I'm trying to paint the picture here is that you can use model coordination and Navisworks side by side, because a lot of people always ask, oh, well, does this replace Navisworks? It doesn't replace Navisworks. It doesn't do as much as Navisworks. Uh, but it, it's it's because it's based in ACC in the environment, you, you can kind of get 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 more benefit out of it uh, if you have access to it. So then you're going to create issues that save directly back to the cloud model workspace, your ACC common data environment. And then this was something I only discovered recently that you can then save all the files to model coordination as an NWF file. And then uh, you can run automated clash detection. That means that when the links into your NWF file get updated in the future, uh, you can still use that in Navisworks and have the ACC um, have the ACC model coordination workflow um, running alongside that as well. So that's kind of what brings them together is that kind of NWF file at the end as well. Uh, so, so, so key to understand that. In detail, this is the workflow. We probably won't go through all this today. Obviously, I, I, you know, you can have the recording. You can see this back through through recording. These are are a bit more detailed of going through what I just spoke about there. Uh, I won't go through it in too much detail um, right now because I'm going to show some of this on screen uh, today as well. I'm, I'm conscious of time, so that's it in a lot more detail uh, as well. If you want to go through that full workflow, so what we're going to go through then is is model coordination interface. How you create and track issues, running those clash tests in Navisworks, and then creating issues from Navisworks as well. And again, I've already spoken about the difference between BIM Collaborate Pro and BIM Collaborate. Whichever one you have, you have access to model coordination. That's the key thing to get across there. Model coordination is also in BIM 360, by the way. With the, I mean, a lot of people are still using BIM 360 because, I mean, projects are going to run for, you know, one, two, three, five years. And there's no point in moving from BIM 360 to, to uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud. So the, the same workflows still stand in model coordination in BIM 360. As what I'm going to show today, I'll be showing them in the newer platform of of Autodesk Construction Cloud, uh, but but BIM 360 still facilitates the almost identical workflows to what I'll show today uh, as well. So that's important. But then, so user interface again, it's a drop down module. You've kind of got three key tabs across the top. You've got active clashes, assigned clashes, and you've closed clashes, and this is all within the web browser uh, as well. And these are all your various different. Uh, uh, um, options that you have across the top of your model coordination, but you also have some options down the left hand side of model coordination. For example, you can, you know, you can set up a coordination meeting with your design team or, you know, a, a, a design team meeting, you know, every week or two weeks, whether it's online or on site, uh, you can do that based on, on the issues that you're generating in here as well. So that's interconnected and there's lots of reporting and, and view creation um, and, and model viewing within there as well. Um, and then we can also look at the, the assigned and, and versus uh, closed clashes as well. You can compare those. You can reactivate different clashes if you close certain clashes. Now, when I speak about clashes, the clash that you run in uh, model coordination, you, you if you close a clash in model coordination, it doesn't remove that clash from the Navisworks. Uh, so that's key to understand. Clashes in model coordination and clashes in Navisworks are they are separate and um, functions so to speak so if you start clearing clashes in one they won't necessarily clear in the other so that's key to understand and that's why the workflow we suggest uh, is, is, is kind of making sure you're using it as efficiently as possible because you know some people may ask well look if i clear clashes in model coordination 
what's the point of me doing it in Navisworth? But there is benefit to it. And, and hopefully that's what I'm going to get across between today's um, session and the next session as well. We won't get through everything today, of course, but hopefully I, I can give you a fair introduction into what we're trying to achieve. And um, other things that come across are things like views. So you can create views, which are essentially federations of models. Uh, you can choose which models you want to federate in, in the environment. And, I mean, that can be two models. It can be 50 or you know whatever number of models you want to federate. And you can save those as a view. And those views can then be opened in Navisworks as well. So there's that, that kind of integration. And there's something called private views, only visible to you, published views visible to the whole, whole design team that have access to the environment. So to manage clashes then by creating and tracking issues, and the process for that is you create non-issues from non-problematic clashes. So you're clearing all the non-issues, and then you're creating issues from problematic clashes. clashes. I'll show this on screen. And then you're tracking the issue status of those as well. If you're familiar with issues in, in the docs environment or in build or anything like that in ACC or BIM 360, they're the same issues that you, you create on these uh, clash um, uh, clash tests with inside ACC uh, model coordination module. So uh, fully coordinated uh, model, as we know, does not mean clash free. It just means that items have been checked and have gone through a process. It means clashes have been detected, reviewed and approved. So they've gone through a process um, because not all clashes are issues, as we know. Some will be resolved on site. Uh, some will be resolved in model, um, and, and, and some will just be non-issues that we, we don't need to concern ourselves with, uh, such as valid penetrations with walls and slabs, you know, signage or some external electrical fittings and stuff like that as well. And then we can change them to non-issues with inside the model coordination um, environment as well. And then when we find problematic clashes, uh, we can assign those back to individuals. Uh, we can we can select clashes or clash groups and then create issues based on them. And we can assign those issues to the project members for them to access and review the clashes as well. So that's important that we can assign them out. And then you can track the issues uh, with inside either the issues panel or with inside the assigned clashes panel, uh, either in docs or inside model coordination. They're the same issues. Uh, you'll see them inside docs as well, by the way. Uh, they'll just may maybe have a different, different category if you've assigned a clash category to it for example, uh, put in there as well. Then what you can also do is you can append your cloud hosted models, uh, coordination models in Navisworks, like I showed in that workflow. Uh, the way you do that, by the way, is you need to have this plugin installed. It's called Coordination Issues for Autodesk Navisworks. And um, does exactly what it says in the tin. That allows you to create issues and to pull down those models from model coordination. Um, and it then allows you to, to, to put them uh, into a Navisworks uh, uh, federation file, and then you get your NWF, or if you want to save an NWD, that's up to you. And um, whatever way you want to work with that file, you, you can do that as well. So it's important to install that if you want to use model coordination with Navisworks uh, as well. But then inside Navisworks, you can still run those advanced clash tests inside Navisworks using the coordination models. Uh, so, so you can see the plugin here, it's called a coordination plugin. You can see that I can open models. When I open models, they're the models that I open um, from my, my, my coordination space. And I'll, I'll show that when I get into it uh, on screen. And you can still run your clash tests in Navisworks if you want to as well, using Kirk set, uh, selection sets, and various different methods that you still use within Navisworks. Uh, that, 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 that's not going anywhere. Um, so you can still create issues from Navisworks that save back to the cloud model workspace, like I mentioned. So the workflow for that is you create issues from Navisworks, you then access Navisworks issues from model coordination, and then you save that NWF files linked to the coordination models uh, into docs as well. And there's also additional functionality that actually isn't in this presentation that I can show you as well. Um, and then creating issues from Navisworks, that can be done inside Navisworks as well. So an issue is a push pin. It's not strictly a clash. Uh, an issue is just an assignment or observation that you can assign back to someone. You can associate it with an object, with a pipe, HVAC, wall, windows, anything like that. Um, it's not strictly a clash. While it is, 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 is associated with a clash, it's not a clash in itself. It's, it's an issue or a problem or, or an observation, if you consider it that way. Um, and then we, we can access those Navisworks issues from the model coordination environment as well. And I'll show this all, all on screen between today and the next session as well. I just wanted to kind of paint, paint a picture uh, with these couple of slides as well. 
Um, and then again, like I said, saving the NWF files back into your ACC docs environment. And that way it saves all the links, even if the links are cloud hosted files. Uh, that, that, that's the way we kind of get the full benefit um, from, from using model coordination with Nagelsworth as well. Um, uh, so, so, so that's effectively how that works. Um, and then just very briefly, the visual workflow. What we do is we select the shared folder as one of the coordination spaces. Um, we then share packages using design collaboration module. If you're using design collaboration, that is, files are copied and updated in the shared folder. You view clashes in the model coordination module. You create issues on real clashes. You can then append coordination models in Navisworks using that add-on. Uh, you can run your advanced clash tests using tolerances and clearances, uh, and then you can create issues back from those. So that's kind of a little cycle you can go through. Uh, you can then review and resolve clashes in Revit and change the status of the issue. The issues add on, I'll show you that as well. You can then publish and share the latest packages. Um, and this is using the line collaboration if you're familiar with the publishing and sharing uh, of packages. And then you can review uh, updated clashes in model coordination or Navisworks. And then your clashes are resolved effectively, and then you close the issue, um, and that's the the end of that type of workflow. If you're using it with Navisworks, uh, or the clash is not resolved, uh, or you need to change an issue status to open, for example, as well, and then it goes back through that same cycle. You can see that 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 from change issue status to open, it goes back through the review and resolve clashes in Revit as well. So that's the that's the type of workflow. Quite complex, I can appreciate. Uh, but that's what we're going to get through between today and the next session as well. I just wanted to to really instill how how you uh, how you go through that type of workflow and the kind of steps involved. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to jump into uh, the software itself. Jump into the software itself. So again, uh, model coordination, as I said already, at the start of access through your ACC environment. Uh, you'll find it as a as a module here. If for whatever reason you need to Let's say you need to turn it on, but but it's not yet uh, available. So what you can do is come into your member section, come into the individual person's name, depending who they are, and you can just switch it on from them here. So you can see it's actually not turned on for this guy. Uh, I can turn that on for him there. So if you have access to it, it will will appear up here. If you haven't purchased it, it will show underneath unpurchased product, and you just can turn it on. Uh, so I can turn on model coordination for this guy. And that just means he has access to it. And if I wanted to give other people access, I could also. So you could check in there if you need to within your project if you have access to it uh, or not. But you have to have the top area turned on and you have to have model coordination turned on. In some instances, I mean, you can have design collaboration turned on if you're using BIM Collaborate Pro, if you're using your synchronizing publishing from Revit. And I'll, I'll talk through some of those workflows uh, within there. So just to then talk about. The models then that actually get clashed. So let's say you've your folder structure created in your doc area. Uh, that's created in your doc area, your whip area, your shared area. I mean, you may may have something set up differently. So structure engineer has their area in here with their you know various models, um, and then the architect will have their models and obviously other design consultants and, and you know other members of the design team as well are going to have their models in there. The architect has their model in their own work in progress area. So again, and again, as you, as you remember from previous webinars, talk and design collaboration, I mean, other users are not going to necessarily see uh, this particular folder. So again, just to, 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 to clarify on that, uh, if I make sure it's permission settings, I'm just checking who has access to this as an example. So I want to make what, what I want to demonstrate again, and I know I do a lot of this, is I want to make sure that you're clear that the, the folder access is controlled uh, at the folder level obviously by, by various permissions. So if I actually log in as another user, so I'm just going to log in as another user to make sure it's the right user. So I just want to show you that folder access. And again, obviously this feeds into uh, model coordination uh, because it's all based on that folder uh, structure. Everything is based on the folder structure. If our models are stored in there, that's what we're going to see in model coordination. And then so do, 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 hotel project. Here we go. So I've logged in here as the architect. And so again, just to clarify, the architect cannot see the structural engineer's folder. So I'm in here as the architect. You can see here, Nathan or architect, that's what after. Um, they will not see, 
be the, the structural engineers holder for that. So that's the important understand. Now we're going back into the screen as myself. Um, and I'm in here as an admin administrator, so I can see everything. So I can't be the structural engineers holder. So just to clarify that. But then obviously in the shared area, that's accessible to everyone. Again, the architect can see both holders in the shared area, both an architect's model and both the structural engineer's model in there as well. So I'm just going to come back in as the administrator. The reason I want to show that is because when I get into the coordination spaces, the coordination space is a designation. So basically what we do with a coordination space is we say, okay, these are our, this is our model area. We want you to flash these uh, automatically for us. So, I mean, it, it does it automatically. So if I now go into model coordination, and I do have some coordination spaces set up in here. So I'm just going to open this up. So sometimes I did update some models there a moment ago. So, so what we see here, I've created something called the coordination space on the shared area. I have a coordination space on the production engineers area, and I have a coordination space on the work in progress folder for the architect. So effectively, what we're seeing there is, I'll open this in two screens side by side. So this, I'm in mean, here as the same user again. Just, just I just have the windows open side by side. So what I've done is I've created something called the coordination space. So I do that by going into manage coordination spaces, um, and if I just come in here, I can see that. Okay, well, this coordination space, that's the title of it. But the folder path, is, as you can see there, is my work in progress folder for the architect. So it's going to flash any model that it finds within that specific folder. The same for the structural engineer. So they're just work in progress flashes. However, I've also created a coordination space called shared, and that's obviously sitting on top of the shared area. So again, if I come into the shared area, uh, any model that it finds in this folder hierarchy for this level um, is what it's going to flash. And that's why what I saw in there, it's finding the model from each folder and it's bringing them into the coordination space. So just to keep in mind that, that the coordination space is designation. It's not, it's not somewhere that, that, that it saves your folder separate or models separately or copies your models. It just looks into those folders uh, is, is the kind of key thing to understand from that. So again, back into more coordination spaces. I can create coordination spaces in here, by the way, to my heart's content. Um, I have a shared one, I have a structural engineer one, I have an MEP one. You know, I may create another one called published or even one called coordination uh, if I wanted to as well, but I'm just going to leave it quite simple. If I wanted to create one, I would come into my folder structure and I would choose where I wanted to class one model, uh, which folder I want to designate. So I'm fairly all them team them team members in this so you can see if i wanted to create one you know on top of the entire whip i would just choose a new ip and we'll go uh, with board i'm just going to call it whip board press create now you may never do that because you're, you don't want to be clashing work in progress models i just want to show you the process of creating a coordination space so you can see now i've created a coordination space called whip and i can see that that, that sits back uh, on top of that folder there so now if I come back to project, or sorry, not the project, back to, to, to models. If I come back to models, and again, those coordination spaces, you can see there's the new one that I populated. Uh, if I click on that one, for example, it may take a moment because I just created it by the way. So what it's doing now is it's looking inside the web folder and it's looking for every model that sits within there. Uh, it may, may take a minute. It, it usually does just the first time we create one. So if I go to the architect one, it's finding all of the models that sit within by the architect folder structure. So again, I'll, I'll move away from that. I'm going to come into the, the shared one. So in the shared one, it's finding these two models. That's a structural model, and that's a that's an architectural model. The bottom one here is. So again, uh, if I really, really wanted to clarify things, come into my desktop connector and, and come into my same project, uh, what is that hotel project? Project files uh, into a shared. So again, the models that I'm seeing here is the model that I see here, social engineers model, or ST advanced, which is that one. And again, if I come into the architect's model, it's do uh, do that's not refreshed at the moment. I was messing with that about an hour ago. There we go. So there's the model that it's pulling in there. So what you'll notice is it it removes the folder breakdown. It removes the folder breakdown because it's just looking at the shared 
structure and it's pulling in those two models. Now, what you'll also notice is the curly brackets in 3D afterwards. If you're familiar or if you're a Revit user, that's your default 3D view. So it, it actually it actually doesn't show you the entire model. It actually takes the views in model coordination out of the model. Even though this is the model that it's actually pointed at, it's just taking the default 3D view. The reason it's doing that is, so if I go into, for example, if I go into Revit, uh, I'm gonna open up. Yeah, so this is the architectural model. It is a work shared model, but we, we don't need to worry about that for now. So I'm just gonna open up this one. So all it's publishing is this default 3D view that I see here. The reason it's publishing that is because that's what I've selected in my do, do, do publish settings. In my publish settings, I only had my default 3D view selected. But if I had other 3D views selected, when I publish this model and in my coordination space, I will see all of those different views. I will see every single view that you see here. I will see them available in here to me as well. So it's based on the views from the Revit model. Even if, if you're pointing it towards the folder, it just pulls out the views. So the benefit of that to you is that you could create in your Revit model, you could create different coordination views using view filters, uh, you know, with certain models turned on, with certain elements turned on, for example, you may just have all your, you know, columns turned on, another one with, with, with all your reinforced concrete, another one with all of your mechanical elements, depending on what you're trying to filter. And if you create those views within here, when you publish those in the coordination space, they're the ones that you're going to see. And that means that you can actually clash those views against each other if you want to. Either they're in the same model or they're separate models. It doesn't really matter. You can still clash them against each other as well. So that's important to understand as part of that. Now, these two models, we only had two views published from them. We, we just didn't have any, any more uh, within those particular models at the time. So what I can now do with these two models, and you keep in mind, I only have two models in here. I could have multiple models if I want to, but I just want to keep it simple. In my shared space, I'm going to choose those two models and I want to go open uh, viewer. So what it's done is it's federated those two models. So you can see there's a coordinate issue happened in the background there. Uh, anyway, that's something that, that needs to be resolved. So we can ignore that for a moment. So what it's done is it's federated those two models for me and um, federated those two models for me. Um, and they, they are being based on, again, that default 3D view from each model. Again, structural model, default 3D view, uh, architectural model, default 3D view as well. So when I bring those two models together, I can choose to add in other models. If there's other views from those models available, they'll also appear in here as well. And I can add them in. It could be the MEP model, for example. Uh, it could be any other type of model that I have in there. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, do, do, do. So I'm just going to refresh that for a moment because I did resolve that and I did publish the new coordinates. So I just need to wait for it to update and something. Uh, I'm also going to do is I'm just going to go back into my doc area. And what I'm actually going to do is do, 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 I'm going to create a folder within here and I'm going to call it MEP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that 103. Do, 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 and call it MEP. So I'm doing that directly in the shared folder, as you'll notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a model in here uh, with MEP elements uh, that, that are part of it. So I need that for a moment. So what I'm going to do now is to close that. I'm going to close that. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new model. Uh, mechanical template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link in my model from uh, my shared uh, shared folder area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage links, manage links, add in one of my Revit models. So I'm going to go using my desktop connector and do, do, do. So 
So all I'm doing is just creating another another model that I want to put into that coordination space. Project files. So I'm going to my shared area, and what I want to do is I want to link in one of the one of the models. I want to link in. So I'm going to link in the structural engineers model. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So the reason I'm going to link that in is I just want to put in a couple of ducts and um, just want to model around that, and then I want to share that model into the MEP space, and I want to show you how that appears. So I'm press apply on that. Brilliant. Okay, so there's our model. By mechanical. So now I'm just going to very quickly place some ducts. So floor plan zero. Do, do, do. And I will, I'm going to purposely create a, a flash with an. Um, couple of elements put in there. So obviously these can't happen on site, so we need to make sure that we capture some of that duct work. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm not an MEP person clearly, so forgive me if uh, this is not technically uh, correct in terms of a duct layout. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is okay, make sure my duct is nicely there, so they're in the ceiling level. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish that model. Yeah. And the way I'm actually going to do it is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm just going to call it board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that model. So all I'm going to do is just going to show those ducts. Okay, so what I need to do is I also need to acquire my coordinates. Do, 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 acquire coordinates from the social model. Perfect. And in that duct coordinates, I'm going to EH, I'm going to hide that. Yeah, so all I'm sharing is those ducts. And then with my publish settings, I want to make sure what I publish then is I'm going to put up, do, 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 I'm going to share those two views 3D view and coordination view. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that model into the MEP folder. So I am working directly into the shared folder here, which is you know, maybe not a process that we don't do. MEP. Forgive me if I'm not naming correctly. MEP. Save. So I'm saving that using my desktop connector. I'm putting it straight into that. Uh, shared folder. All I want to show you is what happens when we add in that model effectively. Uh, your process, you know, it's probably going to be different. I've just maybe skipped a few steps uh, because we're not on, our, on, a, on a live project. So let's give that a moment. Uh, should then appear. Shared, shared, shared. There we go. So that's now appearing. So now in my coordination space, I'm going to see this model. Uh, I'm going to see this model appear within sort of my coordination space. So that's the one that I just saved. I could have, there's lots of ways I could have gotten my model in there, but we'll 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 kind of leave that out for the moment. I just want to show you the process um, after you get it into the environment. So just while that's happening, I could have also collaborated and put it into my whip area and then created and shared a package using the design collaboration process. Uh, from inside here, if you're familiar with that, um, but I'm not going to get into that now. But it's the same because it's on the folder structure. The same same rules apply um, if you're 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 placing your model in your ACC environment because it, the 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 coordination spaces uh, are are linked in in the same way. It doesn't matter which way you get your model in there. So I've gone directly in, into the shared area, uh, which is probably not recommended, but that is how we've done it. So if I go into model coordination, this may take a moment so I can see it's actually 943 is the last time that it was dated. So what I want to is 
So what I want to just check is. So it's probably it's processing in the background. It doesn't always happen instantly uh, with coordination space. It can take a few minutes to update, uh, as you can see. So I'm just going to see if I can speed this along on my side here. So two moments. Uh, So we know we know that the model does exist there in the background, uh, as we can see. Do, do, we can see in the share, it's now in the shared area. Uh, we know it sits in there, so we just need that coordination space to update. Uh, there is no there's no refresh button. Uh, it's checking, it's checking. Is checking it, yeah, it may, may just take a few minutes, so I'll just um, okay. I'll, I'll leave that just for a moment, uh, but just what, while that's happening in the background, uh, what I do want to go into is obviously how we we, we kind of get through and resolve the clashes and some of the other areas that are available in here. So, currently, it's still processing as we can see, and uh, what I can see to. to what I can see from in here is my clash matrix. So this clash matrix, there's currently only two models or two views. Uh, so what it's doing is it's clashing all of my elements against each model. So this one is 172, but it's clashing the same models. So you're probably asking, well, why is it different? Because the clashes is based on the primary model. So the, the, the category or breakdown of the model, it actually makes 172 clashes. However, it's the same clashes that we're finding, but in the architectural model, it's only 138. So that could be one wall that's hitting multiple different elements in the structural uh, model as an example. I can also filter on these, but what I can do is I can also create various different views um, of my models as well, like I mentioned as well in the slides. And then I can assign those clashes uh, as well in the background. It's created by chunk of views created. Yeah, so I'll, just, I'll let that process, uh, I don't want to, to, to disturb that. And again, I can just double check in my files area uh, my shared area. So my MEP model, it definitely exists in there. So it, it should be still processing there. Again, if I open up this this 3D or, or rev model, I can see all my ducts in there. And again, I, I can see my my uh, my my shared uh, views are in here. So this is what I'm going to see eventually in the coordination spaces. I'm going to see both of these uh, appear in here as well. So I'm just going to leave that for a moment. Uh, if I just come back into my model coordination. Okay, there we go. Finally, have them. last check 1039, which is just now. So, what we can now see is the MEP model, so even though the full model was put up, there's the default 3D view, and there's the, the, just the duct that I had filtered on. So, that's how you'd use those different views to filter on um, various different filter views, or however you want to break down your various views. Whatever you create in here, and whatever you choose in your published settings, that's what gets viewed within there. So, so I think that's, that's pretty clear. So, now of your coordination works uh, do, do on this. So I'm just going to open up the uh, board and the structural model. So even though those are models in there, I don't have to turn them all on. So again, I can have a look at this. So I can see. Where it is my duct. So there's my duct there. I can see they're in place. The coordination has worked of the actual uh, coordination work of, of the coordinates locally. Um, I can see my two models in here. So what I can do with this is I could save this view. So even though this is in my shared space, it's just my structural model, it's just my MEP model. So I could save this as a view and I could just say, I could actually just call it duct versus, uh, uh, do, 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 I could call it structure. It could, I mean, it, the structure model could just be broken down to reinforce concrete, for example. I'm gonna make that public. So duct versus structure. So that view is now now created, um, and if I come in here on the left hand side, I didn't have to create the view to, to, to see the model rails or anything like that. I just want to do that in the background. If I come into clashes, I can now see all of those clashes that exist within the model, and there's those three clashes that I 
I purposely uh, uh, created as, as part of that model. So it's flashing those, those ducts are hitting, hitting, hitting those columns, as we can see. And if I click on each individual one of these, it will highlight each of them if I want to. So as it highlights them, what I can actually do is I can drop down that item. So the primary model is, is whichever model is at the top. And I can switch those primary models, by the way. Uh, so that's the ducts. So when I'm generating an issue, I generally want to be doing it in the primary model. Because let's say, for example, in this case, the most likely course of action is that the, the mechanical engineer or designer is going to have to move their ducts rather than moving the, 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 mechan the, the structural elements. So let's say we have all these, these regular ducts. So what I can do is I can go, okay, well, all of those are, are issues. I could also filter down if I really wanted to uh, by various different uh, model uh, properties if I want to. So this is pulling it from... So whatever I, the grouping here is pulled from the primary model, by the way. So if I really wanted to, I could, you know, I could break it down by maybe mechanical system name, mechanical system type. I could filter and perform flashes based on that if I wanted to as well. So if I just want to look at supply air, for example, I could just look at those flashes. Now, obviously, it's giving me the same flashes because th those ducts are part of that supply air system. But you can group it by mechanical system and type as well. Whatever property I choose in here, that's what it's going to filter on IFC, mechanical, uh, various different elements. If I swap the primary model, uh, if I remember correctly, if I swap the primary model, it then changes it to the structural uh, parameter that it's going to clash it again. So it just depends how you want to clash it. In this case, I want the MEP model to be the primary one. There's three clashes. I can set a tolerance if I want to, 25 mil, 50 mil, whatever you feel is relevant for what you're clashing. That's entirely up to you. So I'm going to clash based on that. I'm going to choose those three items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an issue. So I'm going to create an issue, place a push pin on, put it on. I'm going to place it on the duct. So what you'll notice is when I hover over the object, it actually places it on the duct. You can see it highlights there in a different color. So I click on that element. That issue is now associated with that particular item. Even though it's the three clashes, We'll show you what happens now. You, you kind of only need one issue for each flash. It takes in the the the, uh, the Revit ID numbers of each object that it's clashing with. So it's giving me the, the Revit ID of each object. So it could potentially uh, search for that in Revit. Um, so it automatically puts that into the issue. It takes a screenshot of the issue as well. So it takes a screenshot of the issue uh, if I really want to. Um, and I, I can do other things in there, like sign a location if, if I really want to. We'll leave that for now. So it takes a, 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 an image of that, and I can put in a comment back to the MEP engineer if I want to as well. Uh, I can say, you know, please. Uh, 300 mil to uh, do south. So we'll just go by, by elevation direction. So, and please move closer to 300 mil. I can then assign that back to whoever the mechanical designer, mechanical engineer, or someone internally. I can assign that back to that individual, in this case, myself, and press submit on that. So that issue is now generated. Uh, and what I've seen now is that issue is now generated. Yeah, perfect. And then if I want to go into the activity log, I can see the activity log, I can see the category of the issue, see more of the description if I really need to. And it also shows me the model that that uh, issue is actually sitting on. Uh, so we show me the RVT model, which is that MEP model that I created. If I also come into details, it automatically creates a coordination clash category. And um, that's the default one that it applies. I could change that, but for now, we're just going to leave it as coordination clash. So it's, it's automatically categorized it as so. And again, if I come into issue, there's the same issue that I can also see. And if I, if I come out of that issue, uh, so, for example, if I just come out to the, the kind of blank federated models, as soon as I turn on issue and click on that, it will bring me into that as well. So that means the mechanical designer or engineer can potentially come in here as well. They will have received an email notification. So, again, they'll have received an email notification. Uh, if I come into clashes and if I actually go to assign, I'll see there's those assigned clashes. So there's those three clashes. Um, and it's showing me, you know, if I click on that, it's again going to bring me back into those clashes. But in order to get those clashes resolved very quickly, uh, and this is without going into the Navisworks workflow, by the way, 
Uh, I'm just going to show you very briefly. If I come into Navisport or into Revit, apologies. If I come into Revit and if I'm, let's say I'm the mechanical engineer in here now, uh, back into my 3D view, turn on my, my uh, yeah, turn on my 3D view. If I come into my issues panel, uh, I go to overview. It might take a moment, so I'm just going to go to manage issues. Oh, it's because I didn't do a workshop model. That's fine. So I need to just check. It's because it's not a published model. That's why that's absolutely fine. So what I'll do is I will actually open a published model. So what would happen there is the issue would load in. If it's a published model, the issue will load in uh, into that particular model. So let's say I open up oh, uh, structure engineer. It's going to open up their model. Now. Open up this model. And we can, we can just perform the same same sort of task for, for the structural engineer. So I'm just going to let that load. And again, if I come into issues, Okay. So what it's showing me here is the information that I would see inside the APC environment anyway. So I can see the, the kind of clash tolerance that is set. Uh, I can see other clashes that, that reside within uh, clashes in model coordination. So it's actually showing me, it's identifying another model that sits within inside my clash area as well. And if I go to manage issues, you know, this, this guy may not have any issues assigned to him. There's no issues on that model. That's where that is. So if I let's see if I just come back a step for a second, come back to models, open up, open up these two models just for a moment. I just want to show you that issue coming in. So let's say I come back into. So what I'm going to do is structural model is the primary one, uh, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create an issue. Okay, so I'm going to create an issue like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an issue on the structural model. Uh, so I'm going to create an issue on the structural model. And I'm going to say resolve coordinates. It's the same process, but I'm just identifying a different uh, task or observation that needs to be resolved. I'm going to assign that back to the relevant person for that model. It takes a screenshot again. Uh, I'm going to say, please acquire coordinates from our model. So I'm now trying to do that. Coordinates. Spelling is not perfect there. So I'm going to submit that comment. It's assigned back to that individual and it's sitting again, it's sitting on that structural model. So what should happen now is that that, that issue gets generated. And again, all of those issues, uh, if I wanted to view all of those issues, if I come into issues in the docs area, uh, I should see all of those issues appear now. So again, I can see those issues. They all come in, even if I've once generated from site, if I've once generated from other parts of the design stage, I'll see all of those issues in here. These are the top two issues that I've just generated in the last few minutes. There's the, the clashes for the mechanical engineer, and there's the coordination of the floor. Uh, or the, the whole model for, for the structural engineer. So what should happen now is it should load in those models for me. Okay, I'll just, just leave that for a moment and I will uh, I'll just show you another model that I definitely have issues generated on. Just a moment. I'm just going to jump into another project here where I know I do have those issues.
So effectively what we'll see in the Revit area is we'll see the push pin. Uh, so it will apply on the object that it was placed on. So that will come into Revit. Um, you can't change the status uh, of any of the issues. So this one, manage issues. Okay, now I'm going to leave that for the moment. I've no, no idea why that's not working. Uh, updated it as recently as uh, the last few days. Um, there definitely are issues. So again, it, anyway, it brings me directly, you know, into the correct uh, issues area uh, for those relevant models. Anyway, so, so you create the issues on top of the models. Uh, they're done with inside either model coordination area, but they can also be created in Navitworks as well. So any of the issues then that I created in here, any of the issues that I created as clashes come in into the assigned panel. So I'll only see the issues that were generated on top of uh, I will only see the issues that were generated as part of that automatic clashing. If I created a view, I will see my views in here. So there's a the structure. But what I can also do with these views, and this was something that was only added recently, it's still in beta. If I go save to doc for that particular view, so this is the duck versus structure. If I go save to duck for that, and if I go, okay, well, I want to actually publish that model, and then do, 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 save to duck. What I'm very quickly going to do is I'm going to create a folder within the shared area and I'm going to call it a coordination. So you may also do this. Um, action. There we go. So I'm just going to create a coordination folder. It's just somewhere for me to put my model. You don't have to do it. I'm going to save the docs, project files, and go to the shared area. Coordination, press save on that. So what that's going to do is it's going to generate a coordination model. So it's it's a uh, it's a Navisworks uh, format file. So again, that will now populate into my coordination area. Let me just take a moment. So what that allows you to do then is, let's say someone on site or someone who doesn't have model coordination access, you can push out those save view models um, into the doc area. So that means that we sit here in a moment, uh, once it appears in here, Somebody that doesn't have access to the model coordination area can have access to those federated models uh, or those coordinated models. So again, I, I could open this. It appears in here. So it will we'll process in a moment in there. And again, that coordination view was, if you remember, of the duct versus the structural model. So I, I just had those two different models. And again, that's based on that's based on two different models: the primary model and then the model that I'm clashing with. I could incorporate a third model or any number of extra models into it if I want to as well. And I can still review all of those clashes. But what you'll notice here is that the issue comes into, so the issue that I created for the clashes, for the duct come in here, but also the, the, the uh, even though the issue sits in another model and um, it's not in the primary model, it's still showing me that issue from the structural model in here as well. It actually brings in the other clash as well, uh, the other model federation that we had set up there as well. So let's um, come back in here. I can turn off that other uh, model as well if I want. So we don't. So you can turn off the other models anyway from in there. Right one. Oh, it's because it's taken from that view. So I, I can I can filter through those various different models as well. So it brings those in um, into that particular view, but I, I, I don't have to say that as part of my view as well. So if I actually open that again, if I refresh this, perfect. So there's that view, nice and clean. So if I come back into my files area, there's the coordination folder, and there's that coordination file that I actually generated. And I can open this uh, if I just have docs access, for example. I can open this from inside here, and I can open up that particular view as well. And I can investigate that. That's, uh, I can create issues if I want to in here as well. Uh, create further issues, maybe there's design or you know compliance issues or client feedback. I can generate those on top of that federated model. Using my comparison function, I could also compare back to various different models inside there as well. Uh, I'm just going to press refresh on this again just to see if anything has happened. 
start loading in, I may need to do an update. But I don't know if I've done that. And um, so it will show me the push pins in here, and Navis works the same. It will also show me the push pins uh, inside Navis works as well. Okay, I think uh, I'll leave it there for the moment, um, and we'll continue in, in session two. We'll certainly get deeper into that Navis works workflow. Um, but today, what I want to do is kind of just introduce you to the the very basics um, and the typical workflow, and where you could potentially take that uh, with your Navis works integration. Uh, by showing you those those couple of workflows at the start as well. So so hopefully that was useful. Happy to take any questions. And um, if I can certainly give you an answer on the spot, I will certainly will. So, so thank you very much. So the chat box should be open. Great stuff, Pat. Thank you very much. Um, if yeah, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat box. Uh, but we'll certainly, uh, I mean, the, the, the second session we're going to be going deeper um, into into the Navis Works workflow. I just wanted to show you at a, at a high level uh, the functionality of model coordination and, and how it interacts uh, with your models that you have stored um, in your your HPC environment. And again, I can jump between any of my my coordination spaces. And I can see what models I have stored in there as well. And if I come into my whip cord uh, space, again, if it's the first time, it takes a couple of minutes to load up. So there is every model that's being pulled in from my coordination space. And again, these are all the default 3D models. I've got even got CAD surfaces in here, by the way. I could open up CAD, IFC, NWC files in here as well. Uh, so it's not just Revit files, for example. Uh, there's a lot of different files for that. Uh, Top of surface. Uh, do that top of surface is actually a CAD file in there as well. That, that, that CAD file there, I could perform a clack on that if I really wanted to as well. So I could see my surface is clashing, PWD file, but it still allows me to, to, to generate a clash based on, on that type of model as well. And um, so it supports lots of different file formats, uh, not just Autodesk uh, versions or, or formats. Okay, I'll leave it there. So thank you all for your time and uh, have a good weekend.